In this video, I'm going to show you how to warp vocals in Ableton Live 10. Stay tuned. Okay, so I've got a vocal here ready to use. The first thing you want to do is check the BPM of your vocal. Most vocals you find in sample packs are going to have the BPM somewhere. If you're using a vocalist, make sure you find out what BPM they recorded the vocal track at. And if you've downloaded a a cappella online. The best way to get the rough BPM is to do a quick Google search for the original song BPM. If you can't find the BPM, don't worry, we're going to get to that shortly. So if you've managed to find the BPM, now you need to enter this in the segment BPM box here. Before we do that, we're going to switch warping off and back on again. And this is just going to undo any warping that was applied automatically. We are now being shown the 94 BPM in the segment BPM box, which is our project BPM. We want to change this to 86 or the BPM, the original BPM of your vocal. I'm just going to line this vocal up. You are all I want. I don't mind giving you my love. My love. The audio is now being warped from the original BPM to our project BPM. So let's take a quick look at the settings of the warp. By default, Ableton sets the warp mode to beats unless you've changed this in the settings. For our beats, it, I would usually use for drum beats and anything a bit more rhythmic. For a vocal like this, I would start with complex, and if it sounds how I want it, I'd probably just leave it there. If, it, if I'm getting a bit of an issue, I'll change it to Complex Pro and tweak the form and an envelope until it sounds nice. I'm going to stick it on Complex for now. You are all I want. I don't mind giving you my love. My love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just want you to know that you're something special. Okay, so the vocal's sounding nice at our project BPM. But you might not always know the BPM especially when you're downloading acapellas or when you're sampling something from another track. So I've got another vocal here, and this is just a chopped section from another track. So Ableton is usually pretty good at guessing the BPM of smaller sections, smaller loops like this. So what we're going to do is switch the warp mode off and back on again, and just pretend we don't know the original BPM. So what we can do now, I want this to be a one bar loop, so I'm going to create a loop from between 19 and 20. I'm just going to press Ctrl and L to loop that section after I've highlighted it. You can hear this vocal is completely out of time now. So what we're going to do, I'm going to leave it on beats for now because this is a bit more of a rhythmic vocal. And I'm going to create a warp marker at the end. What you can do along this top bar where these little triangles are, you'll notice little tabs come up. So right at the end, I'm going to double click like that. So there's yellow tabs come up and with the close bracket, I'm going to click and drag that back to the two here because that's where I want it to end. And you can see this is much more in time, but it's not exactly how we want it. It's still a bit out. So what we can do now is start tweaking little sections. Okay, so I feel like this section here can come back a little bit. This bit here, come forward. And a little tip, what you can do is go up to your metronome and change the rhythm. I'm going to change this to 1 over 8, just to be a bit more precise. So like this is still a little bit out. Now 
Nice, that vocal's sounding in time now, but as you can imagine, this can be a really tedious process, especially when you're manually warping vocals of over three, four minutes long. Precision takes time. If your vocal isn't sounding great after you've entered the original BPM, you're gonna to have to go through it manually and tighten it up. It takes practice to be able to tell where each part of your vocal needs to be, so take your time and be patient. Sometimes it's easier to use the metronome and sometimes it's easier with the beat behind your track. Whatever you do though, make sure it's loud enough to be able to tell where each beat is. So, thanks for watching, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like and share. Remember to subscribe and ring the bell to keep up to date with future videos. I'll see you next time.